to share the message version of Luke chapter 4, verse 18. God's Spirit is in me. He's chosen me to preach the message of good news to the poor, sent me to announce pardon to the prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind, to set the burdened and battered free, to announce this is God's year to act. George Floyd should be alive today, as should Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, David McAtee, and the hundreds of other black men and women who have recently died due to police brutality and racism. I recently attended one of the DC protests. As we stood peacefully on the opposite side of a barrier blocking us from a public park, one of the organizers called out the names of the hundreds of black women and men who have been murdered in recent years. There must have been over 10 minutes of call and response. A Tatiana Jefferson, say her name. Eric Garner, say his name. Sandra Bland, say her name. Philando Castillo, say his name. And each time the organizer paused for a breath, I thought to myself, we're at the end of the list. But the truth is, we had barely acknowledged the hundreds of lives stolen. Six years ago, Eric Garner spoke his last words, I can't breathe. Last Monday, George Floyd said the same. Six years later, we're still fighting for justice. We're still fighting for black people to be able to breathe and to exist in a world that has robbed us of so much. We're looking at 400 years of oppression, 400 years of mothers mourning their children's murder of children wiping their mother's tears as Philando Castile's girlfriend's daughter did while also whispering to her mother, I don't want you to get shooted too. She was only four. As a black Latino Quaker, I live at the intersection of many identities. What we're talking about today isn't just something I'm passionate about. It's my reality. From the comfort of a couch inside of a home, nestled away from fires and pleas for justice, apathetic onlookers warn protesters to remain peaceful and to be strategic. But 400 years of peace and strategy later, we still cannot breathe. Racism feeds systems that keep black and brown people oppressed. It's easy to become apathetic to a statement like that. It's easy to say, well, I'm not racist. I have a black partner, friend, colleague. But racism has shapeshifted. It's not just the overt slaughtering of black people like we saw with Ahmad. It's also microaggressions, like comments about natural hair and, and the suggesting that when a black woman emotes, she must be angry. Racism is the assumption that having a carne asada while being brown or birding while being black is reason enough to call the cops. Black people cannot dismantle systems that we did not create alone. True allyship comes in the form of using white privilege to advocate for true liberation. It's not comfortable, but it's necessary. To cast out racism and ultimately police brutality, it'll take a multidisciplinary and varied approach to identify and root it out. Maybe you're thinking, I've prayed, now what? Or I can't get through to those in my circle who have racist views, now what? Or maybe I can't relate to the protesters, now what? Liberation won't come overnight, but if our allies commit to do the work, a better tomorrow lies ahead. A tomorrow where black men and women can breathe. I don't have all the answers, but here are a few ideas to get started. It starts off with um, educating yourselves. Listen to black women. You've heard it said, but now is the time to truly hear what the leaders of this movement have to say. Attend a protest, which I'm sure many of you have. 
suit up with your mask and stand alongside your black brothers and sisters who have shown up on the front lines for over 10 days now, despite being shot with rubber bullets, <clears throat> tear gas, and threatened by our president. If you're a legal representative, sign up with the Lawyers Guild and provide support in that way. If you're high risk and cannot chance exposure to COVID-19, drop off water and snacks to your local protest rest stop and have a conversation with other white people in your life. That's one of the key ways that we dismantle structural racism in our circles around us because it lives among us and around us. Um, and I started this Thursday with friends with the scripture, Luke 4.18. In this scripture, we're reminded that the burden is on us as believers to hold black and brown people in the light, to alleviate poverty for the poor, to advocate for criminal justice and police reform, and most urgently to support the oppressed because all lives can't matter until black ones do.